This quarry was once a rich source of grey limestone, the same material that was used to build the revetments and curtain walls at Rudlin. At the start of the 20th century, the site was leased for excavation to the Castle Limestone Quarry Company, a quaint title until the word castle is seen in its true light. Before the face of this hill was gouged out, a 13th century stone castle stood on its summit, Dyseth Castle. A visitor looking for the ruins of the castle will search in vain with the aid of this modern ordnance survey map. True, it marks the site of Dyseth Castle, but unfortunately, in the wrong place. There's the limestone quarry at the exact position given by the Royal Commission on Ancient Monuments. And there's the site of Dyseth Castle, according to Explorer Map 265. Compare that with the 1913 Ordnance Survey map of the same area. Travelling north from the town of Dyseth, we arrive at the quarry, which had only been opened a few years earlier. And there, clearly marked, are the remains of Dyseth Castle, perched precariously close to the quarry's edge. This map even shows the location of the castle's well. The 21st century map displaces the castle site by almost 1,000 feet. And in this terrain, that is significant. By the castle well are marked the ruins of a twin-towered gatehouse with a stretch of curtain wall extending westward. To the north are ditches labelled as a moat. This is the Royal Commission volume detailing the ancient monuments of the County of Flint, published in 1912. Here's the section on the parish of Dyseth. The remains of this castle crown the top of a steep hill, which rises about 200 feet above the ground at its base. They consist of a few ruined towers and curtain walls, ranged around an inner and outer bailey. They even include a photograph of the North Curtain Wall. The commissioners record that the site was inspected on the 6th of September 1910. They comment that much of the castle had been destroyed since the lease was granted for quarrying, confirming that the South Curtain Wall and its ancient buildings had been lost. However, all is not lost. The commissioners also note that Dyseth had been surveyed in 1894 by Mr. E. W. Cox of Liverpool. And he had published his findings in this, the Journal of the Chester Archaeological and Historic Society for 1895. The castle occupies a rocky promontory which juts out between the mountains of Craigfower to the north and Moel Harathug in the south. The location dominates the route over the hills to Flint. The great gate of Dyseth was at the east end of the site, flanked by towers of very different design. Cox notes that at the time of his survey, these towers stood at about half their proper height. So much for Llewellyn the last claim that he had left not one stone on top of another. The royal commissioners were obviously offended by Cox's attempts to imagine Dyseth from the evidence before him. But a glance at his image shows that the artist was well conversant with the styles of the period. This is not some silly Disney fairy tale castle, but one appropriate to the age. And remember Cox was there. He alone provides us with the evidence needed to reimagine Dyseth. But academics would rather have nothing attempted than a little artistic license used. The well seems to have had a tower of its own, located at the east end of an outer curtain wall. This ran along the very edge of the cliff. At the far end of this loop stood a large bastion, about 20 feet square. This may have been joined to the rest of the buildings by a short length of wall, climbing steeply up the slope. 
The north walls varied from five to eight feet in thickness and were defended by a further two towers. These three had a commanding field of fire for crossbowmen over the 80 feet to the northern ditch. The weakest point was the north corner of the west tower. This was strengthened by a small outpost, possibly linked to the outer defences. This had two arrow loops. The rear of the central tower may have been the castle's kitchen. One of the walls was heavily stained with smoke and the base of a large chimney shaft was excavated. Cox reported that the inside of Dyseth was a formless mass of ruin. But from the excavations done, he made a good guess at the layout. The hall was about 50 feet long by 25 wide and tucked away in the southwest corner. Its foundations were very thin, suggesting that it was built of timber above the ground floor or cellar. This is confirmed by the amount of burnt timber found in the ruin after Llewellyn's men captured it in 1263. The hall's entrance would have been at the east end into a pantry. The dais for the king at the west with a solar to the rear. From the rest of the evidence provided for us by Mr. Cox, we can try to produce an image of what Dyseth looked like during the two decades of its existence. Everyone has their favorite castle, often one where no ruins remain. Can we reconstruct it? Not without ground plans, not without excavation reports. To do so is to ask us to make bricks without straw. But given that kind of information, almost any castle can be brought to life. That is the lesson of Dyseth. <laughs>